price. So the next session under the discrete time markup chain is the end step transition probabilities, okay? So in this session, we'll be looking at a brief introduction to the end step transition probabilities. Secondly, we'll look at how to estimate the end step transition probabilities using the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. And finally, we'll take a look at some soft examples, okay? So let's begin with the end step transition probability, okay? So the end step transition probability of a Markov chain with state space S is defined by the equation below. So it is the probability that the process goes from state I to state J in end steps or after N transitions. We can also represent it in this form. That is the conditional distribution that the chain will visit a future state J at time M plus N, given that we are in a current state I at time M, okay? So the n step transition probabilities can be represented in a matrix form as shown below. So we now have our transition matrix raised to a power n. This is our present state and this is our future state. So we can read this as the probability, um, the transition probability from state two to state zero in n steps. And this is going to be the, prob the transition probability from state two to state one in n step. And this is going to be the transition probability from state two to itself in n steps, okay? Now let's take a look at this theorem. Let's capture P, which is both in B, the one step transition probability matrix of a finite Markov chain. It can be proved by induction that the n step transition matrix can be expressed in this form. So you can have it in this form or you can have it in this form, okay? So let's take note of that. So now to the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. So what is the Chapman Kolmogorov equation? So the Chapman Kolmogorov equations is a recursive procedure for calculating the end step transition probabilities. Now let's take a look at this theorem. If this process is a Markov chain with transition probability matrix, right, given by this, then we can say that the end step transition matrix or the probability that a process goes from state I to state J in N steps can be expressed in this form, okay? So here yeah, we introduce some intermediate state K. So basically in order to um, move from state I to state J in N steps can be expressed in this form. So we have to move from state I, so that is the Markov chain, have to move from state I to state K in R steps and then move from um, state K to state J in N minus R steps, okay? So there's a theorem behind the Chapman Kolmogorov equations. There's a proof to this theorem. Let's take a look at the proof. So we know that um, the transition from state I to state J in N steps can be expressed in this form. So with the Chapman Kolmogorov equation, we introduce some intermediate state K in R steps. Okay, so using the fact that A is equivalent to the process of being in state J at time N, and B is equivalent to the process of being in state K at time R, and C is equivalent to the process of being in state um, I in time zero or after zero steps. We can say that the probability of A intersection B given C can be expressed in this form, okay? And we also know that probability of A given B intersection C can also be expressed in this form. So once we make the numerator the subject, we obtain the expression in equation three. We also know that probability of B given C can be expressed in this form, right? And once we make probability of C the subject, we obtain the expression in equation four. So we want to substitute equation three and equation four in the numerator and denominator of equation two respectively, okay? So we want to replace this one with this expression here. And we want to replace this with this expression, okay? So once we do that, we obtain this. And once we work this one out, we obtain this. And this can be expressed in this one, okay? So from equation one, we can then have this expression. So by the Markov property, we know that the probability that we are going to be in a future state J, given the current state and the past state is independent of the past state, but will depend on the current state. So that's the reason why we have only this expression and not with this expression, okay? Then we multiply by the second expression here. So we know that this is similar to the transition from state K to state J in N minus R steps, that is what we have here. And this is similar to the um, transition from state I to state K in R steps, okay? And that is what we have here. So we can rewrite this in this form, okay? We can rewrite this in this form, which will end the proof. 
So now let's take a, an example. Uh, we have already seen this from our previous tutorial, but we're going to use it also in this um, tutorial, okay? So a mathematician is trying to create a model to analyze the credit worthiness of various companies. He decides to create a model with three levels. Companies will be graded as grade A, that is the highest level of credit worthiness. Grade B, that is less credit worthy, but still operational. And grade D in default. So credit reviews take place at the end of each month. He assigns probabilities for moving between states as given in figure one. Okay, so this is the state transition diagram for the problem. So we want to find for a company that starts out in grade A at time zero, what is the probability that it is a grade A company after three months later? And secondly, what is the probability that a company in grade B at time one is in grade B or state B at time three? Okay, so let's take a look at um, the solution. So first we estimate the transition probability metrics for the process, assuming that the states are in order. So we have grade A, grade B, and grade D. So this is going to be our future grade, and this is going to be our current grade, okay? So we obtain this um, transition probability metrics from this diagram, okay? All right, so by the Chapman corner of equations, we know we want to basically find the uh, probability that a company that starts out in grade A at time zero is in grade A at time three, which can be expressed in this form. Okay. So um, by the Chapman Commodore equation, we introduce some intermediate states or grade K. So the transition from grade A to A self in three steps can be expressed in this form. We have to look at the transition from grade A to some intermediate grade K in two steps and then look at the transition from the intermediate grade K to grade A in one step, okay? Now take note that this first expression here is going to be the row of the square of the correspond. It's going to be the square of the transition matrix corresponding to this current state A. And this second expression will be the column of the transition matrix corresponding to the future state A, okay? So we know that this is going to be the transition matrix and this will be the square of it. So once you take, uh, you should, can use a calculator to get this, okay, you can take the square of it, or you can just multiply this by itself okay, to get this result. So um, we want to basically get this expression. So um, this is basically going to be, um, we are going to get this result from the square of your transition matrix. So we are going to look at the flex index here which is grade A. So we have grade A here, which is going to be the current state. We have grade B and grade D. So we are going to pick this row vector, okay? Then this corresponds to the transition matrix here. So we are looking at the um, future state, which is grade A. So the future state is here. So we have grade A, grade B, and grade D. So we pick this column, okay? Once you do that, you obtain this, and once you multiply and sum, you are going to obtain this result. And you can see that this is similar to the result we had under the state probability distribution in our previous tutorial, okay? All right. So for the second part, we want to find the probability that a company that starts out in grade B at time one is in grade B at time three. So we can have this expressed in this form. So um, by the Chapman Commodore equation, we have to introduce an intermediate state, K. Okay? So the transition from grade B to itself in two steps can be expressed in this form. We can look at the transition from grade B to some intermediate grade K in one step and also look at the transition from the intermediate grade K to grade B in another one step, okay? So we know that this will correspond to the row of the transition matrix. Um, this first expression is going to be the row of the transition matrix corresponding to um, the current state B. And the second expression here is going to be a column of the transition matrix corresponding to the future state B, okay? So once you obtain them, you can then multiply and sum to get this result. And this also looks similar to the result we had under the state probability distribution in our previous tutorial, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at another example. So there are three private banks and bank one, which is Note, and denoted by B index one, bank two, which is being denoted by B index two, 
impact three, which is being denoted by B index three, okay? So um, we have these three private banks in a certain area. Each month, bank one retains 90% of its client and loses 10% of them to bank two. Um, bank two retains 5% of its client and loses 85% of them to bank one and 10% to bank three. Now bank three retains 40% of its client and loses 50% of them to bank one and 10% of them to bank two. So we want to model this situation as a Markov chain and find it one step transition probability matrix. And secondly, we want to find a proportion of clients who switch after two months from bank one to bank two. And secondly, from bank three to bank one, okay? So let's take a look at the solution. Let X index N denote the bank attended by a client in month N, such that um, state one is equivalent to bank one, state two will be equivalent to bank two, and state three will be equivalent to bank three, okay? So the one-step transition probability matrix can be obtained by using this approach. So let's let's go back to the question. So in here, we know that bank one retains 90% of its clients and loses 10% of them to bank two, okay? So we can have bank one retains 90% and we lose 10% to bank two. So for bank three, there's no going to be um, any result. Now let's go back to the question. So bank two retains 5% of its clients and loses 85% of them to bank one and 10% to bank three, okay? So from bank two to bank one, it's going to lose 85% to bank one and bank two retain 5% and will lose 10% to bank three, okay? So now let's take a look at bank three. Bank three retains 40% of its client and loses 50% of them to bank one and 10% of them to bank two, okay? So for bank three, it's going to lose 50% to bank one, it's going to lose 10% to bank two, and it will retain 40% of its clients. So this is how we obtain our transition probability matrix. All right, so now for the second question, I want to find a proportion of client who switch after two months from bank one to bank two, and also from bank three, to bank one, but before that, we have to get um, the two-step transition probability matrix, okay? So this is how we obtain them. You can also use a calculator to get this result, okay? All right, so by the Chapman Comograph equation, we know that uh, the transition from bank one to bank two in two step can also be represented in this form. So we introduce some intermediate st um, state K. So we look at the transition from bank one to the intermediate state in one step and also look at a transition from um, bank, the intermediate state to um, state two in another one step, okay? So we know that um, this first expression is going to be the row of the corresponding, is going to be the row of, of the transition matrix corresponding to the current state one. And this second expression is going to be the column of the transition matrix corresponding to the future state two. Now, one way to easily get this result is to take a look at the square of your transition probability matrix. So the index here is for the current state and the second index here is for the future state. So where they intersect, you can just pick that result. So you can see that we have um, bank one and we have bank two, okay? So we have index one, this is the current state one, and uh, future state two. So where the intercept is going to be a result of interest or simply you can go by the approach, just pick the rows and pick the column, okay? So once you multiply and sum, you're gonna you get the same result as I've already indicated, okay? So this means that 9.5% of the client who started with bank one switched to bank two after two months, all right? So with the second part, we want to find a proportion of client who switch um, after two months from bank three to bank one, okay? So um, by the Chapman Comograph equation, we can basically introduce an intermediate state K. So the transition from bank three to bank one in two steps can be represented in this form. We have to look at a transition from bank three to the intermediate um, bank, right, K in one step, and also look at the transition from the intermediate bank to bank one in another one step, okay? And we know that this first expression is going to be the row of 
their transition matrix corresponding to the current state, okay, which is going to be three. And this is going to be, this second expression is going to be the column of the transition matrix corresponding to the future state, which is one, okay? So once you obtain the result, just pick the row, right, of the transition matrix corresponding to this state. And so pick the column of the transition matrix corresponding to this state one, okay? So once you um, take the product and sum, you're also going to obtain this result, okay? So let, let me quickly show you something here. So we can see that we are looking at the square of our transition matrix, okay? So um, here yeah, we are looking at, um, it was index three to one. So we are switching from bank three to one. So you can see we have the current state three, okay? And the future state was one. So this were intercept. So there's a result of interest. So this is basically what we have, okay? Okay, so you can see that we have the same result. So this basically means that 73.5% um, of the client who started with bank three switch to bank one after two months, okay? All right, so this will be a trial question. I'll leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out, please. If you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.